this video I'm going to work out two trig derivatives, uh, both of which involve the chain rule. And so we'll get right at this here. We've got on this first example f of x is equal to secant x squared. Alright, so I'm going to do f prime of x to show I'm taking the derivative. Alright, now this clearly has an inside part of x squared and an outside part of secant. Alright, so that means I am going to have chain rule here. When I do chain rule, I take the derivative of the outside function, I leave the inside function alone, and then I multiply it times the derivative of the inside function. So I'm actually going to use some uh, ddx notation in the middle of the problem to show that chain where it occurs. Alright, so um, derivative of secant is going to be secant tangent, and I leave the inside alone. So I'm going to have a secant x squared tangent x squared and then times the derivative of that inside function so d dx of that x squared all right this first half part is not going to change so i'll have secant x squared times tangent x squared now the derivative of x squared is going to be a 2x all right now you're going to want to clean that up because you you know, depending on how this is written, it might look like you're trying to take the tangent of something's being multiplied. So I would take this 2x and I would move it in front. So then my final derivative would be 2x secant x squared tangent x squared. So that just had one nice little straightforward chain rule in it. Okay, now taking a look at the second example, we've got y equals cosine of the quantity 1 minus 2x quantity squared. All right, so I have an outside function of cosine. I have an inside function of the 1 minus 2x quantity squared. All right, so when I take the derivative here, I'll have a y prime is equal to, we take the derivative of the outside function and leave the inside alone. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then leave the inside alone. So then I'm going to go ahead and drop those square brackets at this point. So we'll have 1 minus 2x quantity squared, and then times the derivative, d dx, of the 1 minus 2x quantity squared. All right, now when I go to my next line, all of this stays the same, and I focus on just this derivative right here. All right, but again, if you look at this real close, I have an inside function of 1 minus 2x, I have an outside function of something being squared. So I'm going to have to use the power rule as my outside derivative and then chain on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to keep writing, scooting over here to the left because this is going to get pretty long. All right, so y prime is equal to, this all stays the same, negative sine 1 minus 2x quantity squared. Now, derivative of the outside function, which would be my power rule, so I'm going to bring the 2 down in front, 2, 1 minus x squared, subtract 1 from the exponent. So I've got 2, subtract 1, it's going to give me an imaginary 1 right there. And then, so there's the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone, times the derivative, t dx, of that inside function, which is just 1 minus 2x. So here, Finally, we are getting down to just a straight derivative, no longer having any chain there. All of this is going to remain the same. So we'll have a y prime is equal to negative sine of 1 minus 2x quantity squared times 2, 1 minus 2x. All right, derivative here, the 1's going to go away. Derivative of the negative 2x there is just going to be a negative 2. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this answer up. All right, I've got a negative out in front. I've got a 2 right here. I've got a negative 2. So if we multiply those together, that's going to give me a positive 4. So I'll have a y prime is equal to a positive 4 in front. All right, and then um, if I leave this 1 minus 2x sitting next to this, it's going to look like I'm taking the sign of all of that. So I'm going to choose to move this in the front. Okay, so I'll have the 1 minus 2x, and then times my sine quantity here, sine of 1 minus 2x quantity squared. Okay, um, I would probably just leave it like that. You could go ahead and distribute the 4, leave it. It really doesn't make any difference at that point on your derivative there. 
All right, but two quick derivatives here, um, both being trig derivatives and using that chain rule. This one used chain rule once, this one used chain rule two times. Um, definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.